So my brothers and sisters, we're saying that Allah Azza wa is already close to me, close to you, but we don't feel the closeness of Allah because of my sins, because of your sins. And one great way of getting rid of those sins is to engage straight away in asking Allah directly to forgive those sins. So we say, Astaghfirullah alladhi la ilaha illa hu Al-hayyu al-qayyum wa atubu ilayhi Wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim You can say a shorter version if you don't know the full version. The full version which I've just said is Astaghfirullah, I see forgiveness from Allah Alladhi la ilaha illa hu There is no other God besides him Al-Hayy, the ever-living Al-Qayyum, the one that sustains and keeps everything running Wa atubu ilayh And I'm returning back to him Wa la hawla And I've got no way of staying away from sins Wa la quwwata No way of doing good deeds Illa billah Except through Allah Al-Ali al-Azim The most high, the most, the most great If you know it, you can join me once more I'll say it with you again Astaghfirullah alladhi la ilaha illa hu Al-Hayyu al-Qayyum wa atubu ilayhi Wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-Ali al-Azim Or you can say the shorter version which is Astaghfirullah inna Allah ghafoorur rahim Astaghfirullah Inna Allah ghafoorur rahim You're saying, oh Allah, please forgive me. Oh Allah, you are the of forgiving. You, you love to forgive and you have so much mercy and I'm asking for that. Or you say even shorter one, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. Say it. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. What we're doing there is we're saying, oh Allah, I ask your forgiveness. Wa atubu ilayh and I'm returning back to you. Tawbah means that we say to Allah, I'm going to do my best not to sin. Wa atubu ilayh, I'm coming back to you. Oh Allah, please accept me coming back to you. So this istighfar, this, this thing of seeking for forgiveness from Allah, it seriously removes the barriers that we've got between us and Allah. Now, Allah Azza wa Jal, He seriously appreciates us doing any form of dhikr. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal, He has given, He has given, you know, His name is Ash-Shakur, He is the most appreciative. So don't think that Allah does not appreciate us coming to Him and, and saying, oh Allah, please, please, oh Allah, you know, I'm here to remember you, you know, give me something back. Allah's always going to be there to give us something back. When we remember Allah Azza wa Jal, there is no way that Allah doesn't appreciate what we do. Because Allah has created, look, He's already created those that praise Him anyway. So let, let, get a hold of this, alright? Allah Azza wa Jal has, has created angels that have been praising Him. They've been praising Him from the beginning of the time that He created them till today. They've never stopped praising Him. Allah has taken an oath by such angels in the Quran, Surah number 37, right at the beginning, Allah says, Wasafati Safa. I take an oath by those angels that are standing in lines, in rows. What are they doing? Allah says, Fataliati Dikara. I take an oath by those angels that have been continuously reciting my dhikr, my remembrance, saying subhanallah, saying alhamdulillah, all the different types of saying, you know, to, to, to make, to, to remember Allah Azza wa Jal. They've been doing that from the time Allah created them till today, subhanallah. Okay, Allah has got those angels praising Him, you know, always remembering Him. In fact, Allah said in the Holy Quran, He said, the seven heavens and the seven earths and all that are inside it, they all praise Allah and they glorify Allah continuously except for the humans and except for the jinn. You know what this means? Me and you, we've got human, we've got human free will. We can choose to obey, we can choose to disobey. But the seven heavens and the seven earths, they're busy doing dhikr of Allah because Allah Azza wa Jal has given them no free will. And imagine this, the mountains are singing, they are praising Allah and they're glorifying Allah. The birds are doing that as well. This is in the Quran. When Dawood would, would recite the Zabur, with Dawood Allah says, Yusabbihna bil ashiyyi wal ishraq. The mountains 
and the birds would glorify Allah's praise. They would say how, how Allah is, is glorified. Say subhanallah for example with, with him. They would say that just when he's reciting the Zabur. This is in the Quran. This is in Surah Sad of the Quran. And we know from the Quran that everything, in fact, Allah has said uh, in, in the Quran, um, Allah said, have they not, you know, basically we don't see the birds that are in the air, you and Allah says they are praising Allah Azza wa Jalla. We don't, we don't, we don't see that. We don't hear that. The fish in the sea, they are praising Allah. The ants on the on the on the ground, they are praising, they are glorifying Allah Azza wa Jalla. Every single thing besides the humans and jinns, they do that. Now, what's the case when the angels are doing that? The seven heavens and earths are doing that. What is the case when the human praises Allah or the human comes to Allah and does Allah's zikr? Do you know? Do you know that Allah Azzawajal is more happy when me and you do the dhikr of Allah? Why? Because, let me give you an example. If you created the robot and you downloaded a software in that robot and you said to the robot to stay with you and the robot's got to serve you. And the robot stays with you and the robot serves you. Okay? You created a second robot. This robot, you downloaded the system inside it. You said to it that it's got a free will to leave your house or stay with you. It's got free will to serve you or not to serve you. But this second robot, it stays in your house and it does serve you. Which one would you actually like more? The first or the second? Which one? Second. Why? Because you gave a free will to that robot to move away, but it didn't. It stayed with you. It, out of his choice, it stayed with you and it served you. Now imagine Allah Azza wa gave us free choice. When we engage in ibadah, when my mind connects with Allah in ibadah, in salah, in Quran, in zikr, in dua, in when, whenever we're, we're saying these phrases, when my mind connects with Allah and our tongues are moving with the praise of Allah, Allah loves it more. Why? Because we had a free will. We had free will. In fact, there are several ahadiths to say Allah boasts to the angels of look down. Allah says, Unduru ila abdi, unduru li abdi. Look at my servants down there. Look at what they are doing. Look how they are remembering me. Because the, because the angels who are also the servants of Allah, they don't have any choice. But we've got a choice. So when we remember Allah, we are now surpassing the angels. We are higher than them in one way. Because we choose to remember Allah Azza wa Jal when we had a free choice. While the angels, they have to remember Allah. They don't have a choice. Anyway, my friends, what dhikr does to us is dhikr has... has the dhikr removes the darkness inside us, re removes the stress inside us. The dhikr will remove the, you know, inside us when we're feeling uneasy, dhikr will remove that. In fact, in a hadith of uh, Tirmidhi, it says, the shaitan will not be able to whisper in anyone who is in the remembrance of Allah, who's doing the dhikr of Allah. So the shaitan stays away. Another hadith in Bukhari says, if you continuously say in dhikr, the angels will be with you in the roadsides. The angels will, will be with you on the bedsides. The angels will be with you all the time. Subhanallah, this is the power of dhikr. The power of dhikr is Allah Azza wa Jal, he will, he will give us barakah. He's going to give us blessings. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that, you know, you know, I mean, look at these words. This is a hadith in Bukhari. He says, Mathalu ladhi yathkurullah. The example of the person who remembers Allah. So we're in the remembrance of Allah. Don't forget the four different levels. Come on, quickly. The, the tongue is moving. The mind is present. We say from the heart, all right? And we say, we say with ikhlas and we add a sweetener. Whichever moment we're in the dhikr of Allah, our mind is connecting with Allah. Just our minds connecting with Allah. Or our minds connecting and our tongue moving. Or our minds connecting, tongue moving and we saying with ikhlas. You know, you know what actually happens? Is that subhanallah al-azim, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, such a person is alive. He says his example is kamathal al-hay. Such a person is, person is alive. And the one who's not doing the dhikr of Allah is a person like a person that is dead. That's the example Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used in that hadith. In a separate hadith of Sahih Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Mathalul bayt, the example of a house in which dhikr of Allah or the remembrance of Allah is performed. The, the, the example of that house is like a house that is alive. And the example of a house that where there's no dhikr of Allah Azawajal is like the house that is dead. Imagine from the heavens they're looking down onto the houses, on our houses. Those of our houses that actually have got the dhikr of Allah or we've got the remembrance of Allah going, they're like houses that are glowing, that the angels from the heavens can see these houses are glowing. The power of dhikr is such that we will feel tranquility. Allah said in the Holy Quran, 
Allah says there's only one way of getting ourselves to feel fully calm inside. You know, we want to make ourselves really, really calm inside. We want to make ourselves serene inside, fully tranquil inside. And a lot of us do a lot of things to try and get that done, right? So we will sometimes go through, you know, we, sometimes people go on a holiday to get that. Sometimes people even turn to sin, right? So sometimes people will turn to, you know, alcohol, to gambling. What will that do? Alcohol will take you out of, you know, your state of worry for a little while. But then once the, the, the alcohol uh, effects have worn off, you're back to where you were. Your, your problems are still staring at you and you're, not, you're feeling even more drained. Drugs, people turn to drugs, you go to a really high and then after that a real low after the drugs effects are finished. You feel disgusted inside. When a person will look at haram with their eyes and try and find satisfaction in that, they will feel, have a very self, you know, very, very low esteem, you know, self-esteem inside. Every one of these sinful pathways will lead to something where a person will feel, you know, they're not, they're not, you know, they're not really calming themselves down. Even when a person listens to music, what does music do? Music just resonates your emotions. That's what it does. A person is in love. You listen to a, you know, a, a, a love song. You just resonate one part, one part of your emotions with that song. You're in sadness. You listen to a sad music. It just hits a chord inside you. You just relate to it. But it doesn't actually make you calm or doesn't make you serene inside. It doesn't. It doesn't. No matter what type of music you're going to listen to, it won't make you serene or calm inside. You can go and talk to people. You can talk to people about your stress, about your problems. Yes, sometimes we need to take advice. Please take the advice and get the advice. Yes, but it's never going to fully keep, you know, make you calm. What's the thing that makes you fully calm? The creator of the human beings has said in the Holy Quran, he says in, in, in Surah ar raad Surah number, Surah number 13, Ayah number 20, uh, 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 sorry, Surah, surah Ra'ad, I think it's Ayah number 28, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Allah says, only through the remembrance of Allah will hearts and your inside become calm. Only through the remembrance of Allah. So look, when we do the dhikr of Allah, we are calming ourselves down. You will seriously feel calm down. I'm going to ask you to do this. If you're driving, all right, I'll, I'll tell you this. If you're driving and you do the dhikr of Allah, you'll notice that you'll actually drive slower. You will drive slower. I'm going to kindly ask the, the sister with that child, please just, just calm them down there and bring them, bring them back inside. You will feel the calmness of Allah through, you know, just, just, you, you'll feel the calmness, you'll drive, you'll drive slowly. If, you're, if you connect your mind in Salah, automatically you'll be going slow in Salah, guaranteed, guaranteed. Because your mind is now in the dhikr of Allah. Dhikr of Allah makes you calm, it makes you serene. In fact, if you carry on doing the dhikr of Allah, you'll feel calm, calm throughout the day. Anyone who's in any stress and so on, one of the beautiful dhikrs to do to try and get anxiety, stress out the way is to send salawat on the Prophet ﷺ. And with this particular dhikr, you get something from Allah and you get something from the Messenger ﷺ simultaneously back. All right? This is the only dhikr that will get something from Allah and from His Messenger. You'll draw close to Allah and you'll draw close to the Messenger ﷺ and you'll get His love too. Which is what? You send salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You say, Sallallahu ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam. Join me. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam Oh, you can say the one that you know in your tahiyya. Everyone can join me in this. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد You know what just happened there? There are a group of angels which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam referred to as sayyahina fil ard. These are the roamers of the earth. 
They roam the entire earth, every continent, every country, every town, every city. They wait for someone to send salawat on the Prophet sallallahu We just sent it right now. We ask Allah to bless his Prophet. We ask Allah to send peace to his Prophet. And just because we said that, the angels took that from our mouths. They headed straight to Medina Munawwara. In a separate hadith of Abu Dawood, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Radda alayya ruhi, Allah will reunite my soul with my body. So that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can reply to our salam, subhanallah. He's now replied to our salam. We've received that. At the same time, in a separate hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, in numerous hadith, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa ashra, Allah will shower you, the person who sent salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah will shower you with 10 mercies. Right now, Allah gave every single person here 10 mercies that, that come down to us. That's the thing that will calm you down. The anxiety and so on will be, you know, you'll be relieved from your anxiety. Why? Because you've got so much mercy, so much mercy coming on you. Each time you send one salawat, you're getting 10 mercies. One salawat, 10 mercies. One salawat, 10 mercies. And the, and the piling of, of, of mercies from Allah Azza wa will calm you down. And that's, that's amazing to know that every time we, we engage in salawat, that the angels are coming near us. The angels are taking our salawat to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying salam back to us. And Allah is showering, showering us with 10 mercies. Anyway, there are many adhkar, many different forms of zikr we can do. I'm going to tell you three different times to do zikr. Okay, three different, three different kind of occasions to do zikr. One is zikr on the go. Zikr on the go is when I'm commuting, when I'm, you know, when, I, when I'm waiting for the bus, I'm waiting for the train or something, or I'm in my house doing something. Could be anything. It could be me going up the stairs and coming down the stairs. Do you know that the Sahaba, when they ever, whenever they went uphill, they themselves, they bore on the zikr, Allahu Akbar. They used to say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, whenever they used to go uphill. And whenever they used to come downhill, they used to say, Subhanallah, 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 Subhanallah. This is zikr on the go. There are certain Sahaba who would count the words they would utter from one Jummah to another Jummah. They knew how many words they said. Imagine the rest of the time they're trying to keep themselves busy in the zikr of Allah, whether it's these phrases, whether it's Quran, whether it's just thinking of Allah, just mentioning Allah's name, they used to do that. And that is, that is an ultimate position we want to be in. So, there are, there are, there's a lot of dead time that we've got. For example, you're ironing your clothes. You can do the zikr of Allah. You can iron your clothes and you can say, La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. You can be in the zikr of Allah just saying, La ilaha illallah. In fact, La ilaha illallah has been mentioned as the most supreme zikr, the best zikr by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best zikr. Why? Because it, it, is, it is saying that, oh Allah, you are everything. You are the one and only, you are everything. Because there's no other God. You're the only God. And only God can do everything and you're that, you're that God. You're the one and only. The best thing about this zikr is, you can do this zikr with your mouth sealed, your lips sealed, and just your tongue moving. So that nobody around you knows that you're doing the zikr. Let's try that. Seal your lips right now. Move your tongue inside. Without making a noise, say, La ilaha illallah, go on. Don't make, a, don't make a sound, don't make a sound. Just seal your lips, just move your tongue, you can see. You don't have, it doesn't connect with your lips, la ilaha illallah, you just move inside there. Another one you can do, you want to connect to Allah, just on the go, zikr on the go. Just in your mouth say, ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah, my Allah, my Allah, oh Allah, oh Allah, oh Allah, oh Allah. Just say, ya Allah, go on, seal your lips. No one will know that you're doing this zikr, you're getting sincerity, you're saying it with your tongue. You get, you're getting your, 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 your mind is present. You're calling Allah. Allah is now calling you. You're drawing close to Allah. Allah is drawing closer to you. You're saying, La ilaha illallah. Allah is giving you reward. Allah is also drawing closer to you. So that is a beautiful zikr of La ilaha illallah. The zikr on the go could be anything. You're in the, you're in, you're in the car. You're in the zikr on the go. You say, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al-Azim. This is a phrase which 
Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us in a hadith of Bukhari, it is very beloved to the most merciful one, Ar-Rahman. It is very light on the tongue and is very heavy on the scales of our deeds on the day of judgment when we're going to need our deeds on that day. It's going to be very heavy. Say it again. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al-Azim. Which means, oh Allah, you are so glorified. Oh Allah, you are so wonderful, so perfect. Wa bihamdi and I'm praising you. Subhanallah al-Azim. And oh Allah, I am saying how glorified you are, the most great. When you say Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al-Azim, we're getting a lot of reward. On the, imagine the scales will be heavy on the day of judgment because of that dhikr that we'll do. In fact, in a hadith of Sahih Muslim, it says, Walhamdulillahi tamla al mizan. Just saying Alhamdulillah can fill the scales up on the Day of Judgment, the scales of our good deeds. One Alhamdulillah from the heart. You say from the heart, it could be enough to fill the scales up. That's why we need to be sincere when we thank Allah and we say Alhamdulillah. These phrases are wonderful. So, dhikr on the go. You can do, be doing anything. You can be walking. You can be idle. You can be, I don't know, doing some, I don't know, you could be cooking. You could be, you know, in, in, your, in your room just, just, just sitting down, just, just do dhikr. Just do dhikr, or you could be go, you know, going somewhere, just do dhikr on the way. So this is dhikr on the go. The second one I'm going to ask you to do, my brothers and sisters, is to take specific time out so that we can really connect our minds with Allah and we can really have it with ikhlas. I'm going to ask you to sit down in your places uh, of your musalla space, okay? This is you and Allah on a one-to-one. Okay, I need this, you need this. Guys, don't tell me you don't have time for this. I'm going to ask you to do just five minutes perhaps 10 minutes, if you can do 15 minutes, but whatever you do, don't stop it. Because Allah loves those actions that are regular, though they may be small in number. Hadith in Sahih Muslim. You do something continuously, but even though it's small in number, Allah likes it that you've done it every single day. So for me to sit down on the musalla, on the prayer mat, in the mornings or in the evenings, find your time. No one should disturb you, neither your children, nor the telephone, anything, nor your, you know, your smartphone. Nothing should disturb you. You're just there, you sit down, now you concentrate and you say these phrases, whichever phrases you can. Okay? Subhanallah, 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 Subhanallah. Any phrases. In fact, you can take the phrase of the Quran. Allah's, there are certain phrases there in the Quran you can repeat it as a dhikr. One particular one is the phrase and the dua that Yunus salam used when he was in the belly of the well. A beautiful one to take you out of the troubles that you're in. لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين. You're saying لا إله إلا أنت. There is no other god besides you. Subhanak. You are the most. You are the. You are the most wonderful. You are the most glorified. You are the most sublime. Inni kuntu min al-zalimin. Subhanak, you're perfect. Inni kuntu min al-zalimin. I am the one who's done wrong. You admit that to Allah. You repeat this phrase over and over, over and over again, just like Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam. And what will happen is Allah says in the Holy Quran, wa kathalika nunjil mu'minin. This is Surah number twenty-one, ayah number eighty-seven. Allah says, in the same way, I will rescue the believers. And the Hadith of Tirmidhi says, anyone who's in any distress and you use this or you're in a problem and you use this, you carry on repeating it, Allah will bring you out of your misery, out of your stress. We've got these beautiful du'as in the Qur'an. You can even use a, a phrase of the Qur'an as a dhikr, okay? Just, just repeating it, just to establish your belief in Allah. You can say, Allahu la ilaha illa hu. Allahu la ilaha illa hu Allahu la ilaha illa hu Beginning of Ayatul Kursi and, and it's also in many other places of the Quran You're saying Allah there is no other God but He Okay, just repeating this, 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 this phrase Or you can simply, you know, repeat Surah Ikhlas Try and concentrate on what you're saying Qul huwa Allahu ahad that surah, which is very short, four verses, you say three times, Allah will give you the reward of the entire Qur'an. Mentioned in many different ahadiths, okay? Just repeating that. Now what you want to do is again, move your tongue, have your mind present, 
and you also say from the heart, and at the same time you try and add any sweetener you've got, and you say to Allah, I repeat these phrases, these five minutes, these 10 minutes, these 15 minutes in the morning, in the evening, whatever you can manage, do it regularly. This is my one-to-one -one with Allah with full concentration that Allah is watching me, Allah is watching me, and I'm going to say these phrases to gain Allah's love. So that's the second one I've given you. A third one, a final one I'm going to give you is going to comprise of two different ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ, okay? This is going to be for us to maximize our reward with just a few seconds a day. Maximize our reward with a few seconds a day. So let me give you the first hadith. The first hadith is from Bukhari, where the poor Sahaba, they came, these are Sahaba that didn't have money. They came to the Prophet ﷺ and they put a complaint to him. They said, ذَهَبَ أَهْلُ الدُّثُورِ بِالدَّرَجَاتِ الْعُلَى They said, Messenger of Allah, the, the affluent and the wealthy Sahaba, they have taken the best ranks of the afterlife. They've taken the best positions in the next life. How? They said, Yusalluna kama nusalli. They pray like us, so we're equal there. Yasumuna kama nasum. They fast like we fast, so we're equal. Walahum fadlum min al amwal. But they have extra monies by which they give sadaqah, they give zakah, they, they're able to go to hajj and umrah, they go in the path of Allah. We, we're not able to do that. So, Messenger of Allah, how are we supposed to compete with such people? So, the Prophet then said, Hadith of Bukhari, he said, Should I not tell you something? If you do it, you would have caught up with all the people that have done good deeds before you and you will be ahead also. You will actually be ahead and you will beat the people who come after you and you will be the best in the sight of Allah. You guys ready to know what this is? A uh, few, few, yes, yes, maybe. Mm. Few seconds of your day. My Allah, when did we ever look at TikTok and say, I've only got 40 seconds to scroll in my TikTok. I've got only 50 seconds or one hour, one minute, 44 seconds to go through my Instagram. I'm going to stop exactly at that because I haven't got more time than that. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. This is going to take you 30 to 40 seconds after every salah of your day. Just that. 30 to 40 seconds. Are you guys ready? A few more guys are ready. So simple, such a simple thing. Hadith of Bukhari as well, you can't go wrong. Imagine you're getting, you're getting, the, you're, getting you're, you're catching up with all the people who've done good deeds before you, you catch up with them in terms of good deeds. And the people that come after you, you beat them as well. Subhanallah. What do you say? Prophet said, after every Fard Salah, say Subhanallah 33 times, say Alhamdulillah 33 times, and say Allahu Akbar 33 times. That's all you have to do. What you have to do is make sure after your Salah, you don't do three Salams. What's three salams? Three salams is look. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And then you grab your phone and go, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. <laughs> Some brothers have to take their, their phone straight out. Straight out. As soon as it's finished. My God, is this so important? I mean, I'm your, are you on some kind of emergency call or something that you have to take your phone out? Don't talk to anyone after salah. Don't, don't get disturbed. Just go straight into the dhikr 33. Subhanallah is 33. Alhamdulillah is 33. Allah was in. Bag it in. It's in your bank. You'll see it on the day of judgment. And I'm going to give a quick tip here to my sisters who are doing their salah and your babies cry. Like us fathers as well, sometimes, you know, we brought children up. And babies cry sometimes when you're in salah. But you know, they're very clever. They're very clever. They'll learn how to wait if you teach them how to wait. If you're going to speed up your salah because your, your kid's going, and you go, hello, good, hello, good, hello. They're, they're going to cry even more. But if you get to your, if you're in your salah and you just take your time, you know what happens? Your kids, they watch you. And, now, there's two types of crying, okay? There's one that is a serious cry out of pain, and when they're in danger, I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about the one that they want attention from you. So you better differentiate between the two cries, okay? There's one for just for attention. They just want your attention. Right? Just for attention. Just to, just to get you to come near them, right? Or to pick them up. Now, just carry on with your salah. You know what my kids learn? And I'm sure your kids will do the same. You carry on with your normal salah. They'll sit there. They'll watch you. And they're watching for one thing before they let out that cry. They're silent at this moment. They're watching. They're watching to say, you're sitting down. As soon as you do that, they go, Aah! because they know that that salah means your end of your salah. But don't stop there. Do your zikr. Do your tasbih. Right? Let them come to you. Let them sit on your laps, whatever. But, you know, get into your tasbih. 
they'll get used to it until mom and dad haven't actually started and finished their tasbih, they're not going to give me attention, they'll get used to that. So don't spoil your ibadah because of some whinging, some whining that's going on in the background. And honestly, I think, uh, just on a quick, quick thing on this ride, we seriously need to, you know, take some tips from old schoolers, right? You, you, just, you just be who you are with your kids. You don't have to give them attention all the time. All the time pick them up. All the time give attention. All the time, all the time. Someone's lap, this lap, that lap. What are you doing that for? You just spoiled, you just spoiled it. You just smashed it. You don't need to just let them sit down. Let them play. Let them be themselves. As long as they're not in danger, they'll be fine with you. As long as they're fed, they just need three things. Kids, they need three things. They need uh-uh. Yeah. They need something to eat. Yeah. They need someone to clean their poo and then they just need to sleep. That's it. Three things they need. Food, clean my poo let me sleep. And I say the rest they'll play. If you spoil them by picking them up all the time and so on, you really, you really spoil it for yourself because then they want more, more and more of your attention. Anyway, that's a quick tip on the side. The next and final hadith I'm going to give you is, if you do the next thing, it's a sahih hadith of Muslim where the Prophet ﷺ has told us that if you do the next thing, and this will only take you 90 seconds in the morning, 90 seconds in the evening, okay? Just to, just to give you time. 90 seconds in the morning, 90 seconds in the evening. If you do it, you will come on the Day of Judgment with the most reward. Sahih hadith of Muslim, authentic hadith. No one will have more reward than you, except a person who's done the same of what you just did, of these, this action I'm going to tell you, or they've done the same and they've done something extra. Only that person will have more than you. Are you ready for this? Yes. Our three brothers said yes. Mashallah. Smashed it. Absolutely smashed it. Okay. Sahih Hadith, you come as the billionaire of the Akhirah. Imagine if I said to you right now, are you ready? That I'm going to tell you such an investment is going to make you go ahead of Warren Buffett. It's going to make you richer than Elon Musk right now. You ready for that? How many brothers would say yes? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, tell us that now. You're, you're becoming the billionaire of the Akhirah by spending 90 seconds in the morning, 90 seconds in the evening, and three brothers said yes. The rest of you are like, 90 seconds, Sheikh? That's one and a half minutes. I haven't got that time, have I? That's too much. Maximum is going to take you two minutes in the morning, two minutes in the evening. Let me tell you what you brothers do, all right? Forget 90 seconds. You watch an entire football match for 90 minutes. 90 minutes. There's a break in the middle. One hour, 45 minutes, you sit for the entire match. The score is a draw at the end of it. They're going to go into extra time. You watch that without a complaint. Bring it on, right? Two hours, 15 minutes now with all the breaks and commercials in the middle. Two hours, 15 minutes, you sat there, you watch that. It's still a draw. They're going to go to penalties. You sit there at the edge of your sofas watching the penalties. For another 15 minutes, it's finished, right? Two and a half hours you spent there. Then the celebrations are happening. You watch all the celebrations. Then the pundits are talking about the match. You listen to all of that as well. Three hours have gone. Then you know what you guys do? You take your phones out. You sit on the sofa. You start cussing the guy that lost the match, right? <laughs> you, you cuss him from a whole Saturday, whole Sunday, all the way till the Monday morning. The guy doesn't want to turn up at work because you're going to cuss him. You know, because, so you spend four hours on a football match without any complaint. And I give you something 90 seconds in the morning, 90 seconds in the evening. And you're not ready to do it. Now let me tell you how simple this is. The Prophet ﷺ tells us, you say in the morning, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, a hundred times. And you say in the evening, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, a hundred times. Simple, done. Right? Maximum two minutes of your time in the morning, two minutes time in the evening. If you can do it straight after Fajr, straight after Maghrib, right? Sahih Hadith is a Muslim. You will come the Day of Judgment with the most reward. Guys, I'm going to summarize the talk. I've told you that in every form of worship of our religion, we've got dhikr in salah, in dua, in tasbih, in Quran, when recited, while you're fasting. Any form of worship God, when you're doing tawaf, we've got dhikr in every single thing. What's dhikr? Dhikr is moving the tongue. If you, it would be good to move the tongue. If not, the minimum is making sure that the mind is present. And if you can move the tongue, mind is present, say it with your heart, and you can add any sweetener to it, now you're electrifying, now you're having a massive process inside, you're coming closer to Allah, you're gaining a lot of reward, and you're moving closer and closer to Allah by day and by night, you'll be sinning less, you'll be doing more, more, more rewards, you'll be, do, in the, you'll be in the obedience of Allah, you'll be wanting to come to closer to Allah, you'll want to listen to the Quran, you'll want to listen to the Sunnah and obey. Dhikr does that to you, it will make you come closer and closer, okay? And the three different times I've told you to do it, one dhikr is dhikr on the go, you will try and maximize your dhikr as much as you can because we're all going to have that regret at the doors of Jannah. Why didn't we do more dhikr in the dunya? 
Next thing I told you is to spend the five, 10 minutes or 15 minutes in the morning or in the evening or both if you can and consistently, continuously just give your mind and attention to Allah for those moments you will get a lot in return. And the final one I said these two ahadith after your salah, do subhanallah 33 times, alhamdulillah 33 times, Allahu Akbar 33 times, you will catch up with all the people who've done good deeds before and after you. And the final hadith I gave you was to say subhanallah wa bihamdi, which means subhanallah, oh Allah, I tell you how wonderful you are, how glorified you are, wa bihamdi, and I praise you 100 times in the morning, 100 times in the evening, and you come as the richest person on the day of judgment. Jazakumullah khair wa akhir dawana, and alhamdulillah rabbil alamin.